CF 75 a on the record. All of it. Let's go back on the record of 19 CF 7518, Council of the State Defense. Mr. Hill is present. Ready to proceed now? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, we're here today for sentencing. Um, we'll get ready to proceed in that regard. Okay, ready. Prepare, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Davis, you thought of a strong mission? We did have a uh, number one was the waiver of the pre-sentence investigation that we discussed last week. Uh, two is the motion for a new trial. Um, we uh, wrote and got a guy with the prosecution got the trial today uh, and sent a copy over to the state so they had a chance to review it um, literally in the last couple of months. Um, it was uh, along the same arguments that we made at trial. Um, with that being said, Judge, um, everything else is filed and we're ready to go. Uh, Mr. Quellis, can you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the truth, the whole truth, not about the truth? I do. All right, so I'm holding this waiver of pre sentence investigation report. I believe we talked about this last week. Is that your signature on this form? That is. By signing this form, you tell the court that you agree to waive your right to pre-sentence investigation report prepared by the Department of Corrections. I do. And your attorney have gone over that with you? Yes. All right. And I'll have it be filed with the court report. Um, I do have a copy in front of me of the defendant's motion for new trial. position on the defendant's mission for the trial and you want to have the record. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I have a 
would like to add on the record is just in regards to the Williams rule and just to point out that the state minimalized their testimony in that building to full facts and also did not mention it in the opening statement. And then in closing, during my first, I had it briefly on one slide, mentioned it briefly, and then it was also then not mentioned during the second closing by the state um, to further show, again, that we did not make that a feature of the trial regarding SS's and IV testimony, and SS would be for part two of her testimony, um, Your Honor. And then the rest, of course, the facts and the evidence, and then also the corroborated evidence that then supported for the court of the left eye has already been vetted and before the court and argued and we relied upon those previous arguments in case law, Your Honor. Did that have any other on? Judge, just in uh, your response to that, we would argue that the state not only brought up the wind rule in their opening and in uh, their closing. They didn't bring up in their opening. I, I remember that. Hey, just let me finish. Let me, let me, hold on. The reason why I remember it didn't come up in the opening is because you had it mentioned in your slide during your defense opening, and I remember reading it thinking the state never mentioned it in their opening, and you skipped over that portion, uh, portion of your slide. That's why I remember it was not in the state's opening. But continue. Go ahead, counsel. I apologize, but I meant it came up first and second of their um, closing arguments. Uh, as part of that, Mr. Stannard did bring it up in his response to our closing, and as he was going over um, uh, the building block or the, the ABCs and blocks of uh, things, um, it was specifically brought up by Mr. Skinner. So I would argue that it was brought up in that and. It was a feature of the state's case, um, which is why we brought it up in our motion for the trial, Your Honor. Anything else you guys want to add? The only thing I would ever add to Your Honor is that carrying is no, no longer um, valid law as it was um, superseded by the Clean State, which is 934 Southern 2nd, 1248 in 2000. The motion for new trial is denied. Anything else we need to handle post trial other than um, moving on to the sentencing portion of today's proceedings? Not from the state, Your Honor. No, I'm not sure. the right, state, are you presenting any testimony or, or evidence? A bit of an impact statement, Your Honor. Okay, you can call your first witness. Yes, Your Honor. The state will first call from really good. Is she just reading a statement or? She's reading a statement, Your Honor. Do you guys have found questioning her? No, Your Honor. Okay, she can just take the podium and she can go ahead and just read the statement. Do you want to swear her in? I would say yes, Your Honor, you do. Ms. Smoke, you raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm tell the truth, the whole truth, not the truth? All right, ma'am. Uh, go ahead, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Just please state your name for the record. Give it to Michelle Goldman. And Ms. Mowgli, are you the mother of I.S. and the grandmother of Hazel? I am. And have you prepared a type statement to read to your honor today? Yes, I have. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Just take your time. I remember, I remember looking up at my mother in a state of confusion. I stood up to excuse myself from a conference room full of people. I found myself standing in a restroom trying to catch my breath. I felt the tightness in my chest and my legs immediately collapsed. I fell to the floor and began to cry. My cries turned into screams of terror as I lay there in disbelief. February 12, 2019 was the day my world forever changed. This was the day I found out that my, my Yanni and little Hazel were gone, gone, 
forever. Before I could even make it home and tell my children, I received a call that it was already aired by the local news stations. I rushed home and immediately gathered my children because I wanted to be the one to tell them. I had to find a way to let them know that their sister and niece was gone. I will forever, I mean, I will never forget the look on their faces when I told them. It was so hurtful because there wasn't anything I could do to help ease their pain as they all broke down. The next few months were so hard trying to keep my kids moving forward because Ayana was always a major part of their lives. She often turned her laptop into a, a projector and turned the room into a classroom. She was their biggest supporter and always pushed them to do their very best. After the situation, my kids began to struggle in school. Often I would see the news station at, their, at her bus stop speaking to anyone who was home. I would have to pick them up from school early frequently. Other days they couldn't find the strength to even get out of bed. Everything they worked so hard, everything they worked so hard to accomplish began to slip away. Although I was trying to follow my, my own education, I took a break from college only to never return. Work was another struggle for me. Being in a medical field is my responsibility to help others, but there was nothing I could do to help myself. I would often go into empty offices or go sit in my car just to cry. I isolated myself from my friends and my family and went into a deep state of depression. We would often go on random family outings. She loved the, the water, so we would go to Mayport, various piers, and a river walk. Sometimes we would just take random car rides. Ayana was always so happy-go-lucky and would have all of us cracking up laughing. There was an awkward silence the first car ride we took without her. Our smiles were replaced with crooked smiles, and our laughter, laughter was replaced with silence. Holidays are so hard. The first Christmas without her was the hardest. There were so many unopened gifts under the tree with her name on them. We try to keep our family traditions of going to look at Christmas lights on Gerber Road because this was one of our favorite, favorite things to do. I will never forget our last Halloween. We went to pick out costumes and it, took my, and it took me by surprise when she told me she didn't need one. She took my badge and my scrubs and dressed up as me for Halloween. Mother Day will always feel different because now I have three instead of four. I'll never get another Mother's Day card for her, coupons for bag rolls or flowers hand picked from my garden. Ayana was full of life and wanted to do so many things. She wanted to be a pediatrician. I thought about being a lawyer. To my mom, she was going to be a lawyer because she could talk her way out of almost anything. She was thoughtful, caring, responsible, ambitious, articulate, a leader, a comedian, and so many other things. She was just a breath of fresh air. She was everything you could ask for in a daughter. Regardless of the picture that was painted, we were so close, she was my first love. I will, I will never hear her say, I love you, or hear her say, I got some tea. I will never receive another FaceTime from her while I'm at work. I will never hear my granddaughter's first cries in a delivery room. I will never get to hold my granddaughter or get, or get her in the middle. I get her in the middle of the night at my home bed with Ayana. I will never get to see her as a mother. She was so happy when I told her I would take a maternity leave when the baby was born. These things was taken from us just as she was.
She wasn't in an accident. And she didn't fall ill. She was murdered. He's been saying the words don't feel right coming out of my mouth. I would have never imagined this would happen all because she was pregnant. Being the youngest in the family, I'm always, I've always had the support of my older siblings. I have a special relationship with each of them, and they're always been there for me. I remember when my, my daughters were much younger, when my sisters kept them while I was working. When I picked them up, their hair was braided in the cutest style. From that moment on, it was ease and braids. I mean, braids and breeze, sorry. They love to play just dance at another aunt's house. As much as my nephew tried, he could never beat her. <laughs> we have family gatherings on a regular basis because we want our kids to grow up together. Never did I believe our family would experience this type of loss. This situation has caused severe trust issues and has forever changed that special bond. Over the past few years, I replayed a lot of scenarios in my mind. What if some of the things that I've learned throughout the trial had been brought to my attention? What if I found out she was pregnant earlier? What if I was told that my daughter was questioned by their aunt about an inappropriate relationship or were prompted to be questioned in the first place? I would have never put my daughters in harm's way had I known these things. I will have to live the rest of my life with, it, with that what ifs. Although I will never get over this loss, I'm so thankful that justice was served. There were so many people that assisted us in the justice process. To Detective Abbott and Miller with you, thank you for everything. It didn't matter how many times or how late I called. You were both there for me and never once rushed me off the phone. I appreciate both of you more than you'll ever know. Thank you to all the detectives and knocks that searched the landfill for seven days in those dreadful conditions. You are truly thankful for, for you all. To the state attorney, Stacy and Dan, I can never express my gratitude for our time and the effort that you put to ensure justice was served. To everyone at the state attorney office, thank you. Not only to you, to my family, I'm speechless. I love y'all. Thank you to our judicial system, the voices of Ayanna and Hazel were heard. We heard things that no one should ever hear in their lifetime. However, justice was served. I thank God for the 16 years that I was able to spend with her. Until we meet again, I love you forever. Thank you. Thank you. State, do I need to enter an order uh, finding of a sexual predator for count three? Yes, Your Honor, I actually do have a prepared on this one. You can just pass it up. I'll take care of it today. Yes, and Your Honor, so for the record, I am order designated to send it as a sexual predator for count three. Pursuant to court statute 775.21, based upon his conviction, and an uh, ultimate sentence today of 794.011, for an 8, for an B. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
Uh, before we get before we get started, I do I do want to I mentioned this in a few times throughout the proceedings. We obviously spend a, a lot of time together. That two and a half week portion that is going to include the many pre trials and court dates we had over the summer and the spring leading up to this trial. Um, I indeed want to commend the attorneys for how this case um, was handled from the beginning to end since I took it over. Um, I know it was a lot of work. I was present for a lot of that work and a lot of the hearings and the depositions and the motion press and argument. And uh, I want to thank you guys for how you guys handled the proceedings in a very difficult case. I don't have too much to say. A couple of things I do want to add is what I find most sad about these cases. about these cases is the impact it has on people beyond this courtroom. Um, although it's the state of Florida versus John McQuillas, this court has been filled with people beyond that. Aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins, and even on the defense side, his brother, his aunts, his cousins, and then what goes unmentioned is his five children. And per my math, one of them was probably born a month after he was arrested. He's probably even four or five years old now. And uh, none of those five, although they have to live with this, they don't deserve that. It just shows you the impact of one decision impacts so many people beyond the criminal justice system. The, the last thing I want to add is the testimony came out during the trial. Uh, the family found out early December the 3rd and then the, family, and the rest of the family found out December 6th regarding uh, Ayanna's pregnancy. Um, she had no B visit on December 13. I recall the testament coming out that the child, at that point, the pregnancy was 22, day, 22 weeks and five days. And if you do the math, six days later, um, December 19th, she would have been 23 weeks and four days. Two people were murdered. That baby could feel love and comfort. It's 
sadly, um, because of Mr. Coyles, he made sure it felt pain. That baby was a real person. I find some comfort knowing that she was with her mother at the time. Uh, sir, you can stand with your return to the podium. So, Mr. Coyles, you were found guilty by a jury of your peers on all three counts of the indictment. The only difference being that the jury found you guilty and made us a finding of that you discharged the firearm. As to count one, you're adjudicated guilty of that offense. You're sentenced to life in prison with a 20 year minimum mandatory as required by Florida law. You have 1,537 days credit. As to count two, you're adjudicated guilty. You're sentenced to life in prison. You have zero days credit. Count two is consecutive to count one. Count three, the sexual battery charge, you were a judge guilty. You're sentenced to life in prison. Count with zero days credit. Count three is consecutive to count two. Count three does carry surcharges of 201 151 and 151 dollars as required by Florida statutes. Uh, state anything else we need to add? Uh, just that he has designated a sex predator does he be able to drop his I did sign the order designating him a sexual uh, predator and he'll be filed with the clerk's office today. And that is all for our thank you. Is that anything from defense? No, Your Honor. If I didn't say so, and maybe I uh, I know I announced the 20 year mid man on count one. There's also that 20 year mid man on count two as well. I think everything else I covered in my other sentence. There are, it is 518, 518 in court costs and feed it PD application, if I didn't say so. State last chance that I capture everything. Yes, Charles, that's all I can think of now that you put the designation as well. Anything you need to clarify? No, Your Honor. The thing I need to add to clarify. There you go. All right, thank you guys. I hope, um, I know it's been a long four and a half years. Hopefully, you bring some kind of closure to both sides, um, especially with the Mobley and Sawyer family. So, uh, with that said, we'll be in recess. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on a second. Sir, you do have 30 days to feel the legality in this sense. And so now we'll be in recess.